Good morning, students. Today we're going to discuss chapters 18 and 19, which is entitled The Open Economy. Uh, what that means is we're going to be considering the implications of trade, international trade. Now, you might recall that, or you should recall, that I gave you an equation for GDP, which is Y equals C plus I plus G plus NX. Now, we've talked about many aspects of this, but we haven't spent a lot of time talking about NX. NX stands for net exports, which is exports minus imports. In addition to the flow of goods and services through export and import, in every one of these transactions, there are financial resources that also flow and they equal each other. So when we buy a good from another country, then that means that our financial resources flow to that country. And if they buy goods from us, then their financial assets flow to us. We refer to this net capital outflow as NCO, net capital outflows. And um, one way to consider this is to think that um, savings minus investment, or the savings that we have, minus what we invest in our country, uh, would equal NX, net exports. And therefore, since savings minus investment also equals net capital outflows, we can then deduce that net capital outflows equals net exports. So let's talk for a minute about the trade deficit. I know I've asked you before, and if I haven't, think about this for a minute. Are trade deficits a bad thing? Initially, you're going to think trade deficits. Deficit, that's a bad word. Therefore, trade deficits must be a bad thing. What I'm going to explain to you is that there's no such thing as a trade deficit. A trade deficit is something that was invented by politicians to get us worked up about uh, foreign countries and how they might be harming our economy. So let's, let's think about this for a minute. Do you have a trade deficit with Walmart? Is Walmart buying goods from you? You're certainly buying goods from them. So yeah, you have a trade deficit with Walmart. Is that a bad thing then? Maybe you should tell Walmart, I'm not going to buy anything from you until you buy something from me. Well, that would be ridiculous. Maybe you have a trade deficit with uh, Target. Maybe you should stop trading with Target until they start buying goods from you. Well, obviously that's ridiculous, right? So let's think about this for a minute. So China sends us goods. And if we did not send them anything in return, that would be a deficit. But we do send them something. We send our money. And so we get goods and they get our money. Now, who's getting the best deal? We are getting goods, electronics, and other things. And they're getting little pieces of paper with the pictures of dead people on them. So who got the best deal? What, what is China going to do with those, paper, those little pieces of paper? Well, they're going to buy goods from other countries, or they're going to invest in goods here or real estate and so forth here in our country. Anyway, no matter how you look at it, that money eventually returns to the United States and in, in exchange for other trade. So the trade deficit is something we shouldn't even worry about at all. It doesn't exist in the way that it's being presented, and it's not a problem. 